What's going on everybody? Gareth here, FCP Hero. Welcome back to the DIY video. Today we're going to be replacing a serpentine belt and serpentine belt tensioner on this F30 320i behind us. So these parts here are going to pertain to really any N20 or N26 powered BMW. These serpentine belt systems are actually very simple on a lot of the newer BMWs. It's usually just a single tensioner and a very small belt. Unlike a lot of older BMWs, they use tensioners and either pulleys and separate pulleys for the AC compressor. A lot of modern BMWs have simplified a lot of the accessories. So in this vehicle's case, the only thing that this serpentine belt is driving is gonna be the AC compressor and the alternator. Uh, vehicle has electric power steering, so no power steering pump, and it doesn't have a mechanically driven water pump since it has an electric water pump. So those are two accessories and aren't driven. So very simple system. And in the case of this F30 328, there's quite a bit of room in the front of the engine. So this is definitely something that you could take on a home. You don't have to remove that much stuff to gain access. And uh, by doing this, uh, especially if you have a squeaky tensioner or pulley on the tensioner, you have to replace this as an entire assembly. And the general rule of thumb on these parts is if you have to replace the tensioner because it's making noise, you also have to replace the belt at the same time. Uh, because the pulley on the tensioner also wears at the same time as the belt does. So what will often happen is if you install a brand new tensioner but leave the old belt on, you'll, you'll often hear some noise afterwards. So uh, what you really want to do is when you're doing this service, if you're replacing one of these components, you have to replace both of them. And roughly 80,000 miles is about the time you'd be doing the service anyway. So if you're at that point or even a little bit past and you're contemplating doing it, follow along with this DIY video. We'll show you how to go about doing that. But before we get into those steps, let's talk about some of the tools we need to do this job first. So in order to replace the serpentine belt and serpentine belt tensioner on a F30 328, uh, E10 torque socket for the mounting bolts for the tensioner, 16 millimeter uh, traditional socket for removing tension on the belt tensioner, a six inch 3 8 extension for gaining access to those mounting bolts. Uh, also a variety of ratchets, a really long ratchet really helps for removing the tension on the tensioner and a short ratchet for removing those bolts. Also an electric ratchet will help speed up that process a little bit. You're gonna want a six and seven millimeter hose clamp nut driver or flathead screwdriver for removing the air box and potentially that lower silencer if you'd like to remove it to get it out of the way. And a torque wrench that can do at least 19 newton meters of torque that you're gonna to want a torque wrench that that's the middle of the range because that's where it's a little bit more accurate. And also a work light since you're gonna be working in a relatively dark area of the engine bay. So uh, if you have access to a work light, that's gonna make it easy, but that isn't necessarily uh, mandatory. Uh, but at minimum, E10, 16 millimeter, and some ratchets. That's all you really need to do this job. And now that we've gone over the tools, let's uh, go ahead and get into it and see what it's gonna take to get it done. So first thing we need to do in order to replace the uh, serpentine belt and the tensioner is we need to remove the air box, which sits right here between the front clip of the engine and the engine itself. So we have our hood release cable, which sits on the air box. We're gonna remove that. After we have our hood release cable out of the way, we're gonna remove our mass airflow sensor connector and push this out of the way. And then we have a six millimeter uh, hose clamp down here. You can also use the flathead screwdriver. And then from there, we should be able to pull the air box out. So it's just held in place with these grommets. So you just want to pull up, make sure they clear. And there's our air box out of the way. So at this point, you can actually gain access to uh, the serpentine belt tensioner and the serpentine belt itself. Uh, you don't have to remove this lower silencer for the intake. However, for the sake of the video, I am going to remove it just so you can actually see what's going on. Um, otherwise, there's this bulky thing is just in the way. So it's one more hose clamp down here. And then uh, we have one of the expansion tank hoses secured to the bottom of it. So like I said, at this point, you can technically go about removing everything, but I'm just going to remove this so that you can see a little bit better on camera. Now that we have full access to the front of the engine, um, you can see it's a very simple setup. We have the alternator up here, an air AC compressor there, harmonic balancer down there, and our tensioner here. Very simple system. And uh, if you wanted to take a picture of what the belt layout looks like uh, now, that'll probably help you a little bit later on when you go to reinstall the belt. Um, but this is a pretty simple orientation, so pretty confident uh, most of you will be able to remember what that, uh, what that looks like. It's a 16 millimeter. Uh, six point head right here. That is going to be uh, how you remove tension from the tensioner. 
And uh, all you have to do on this one is we want to rotate it that way. So we're going to have to turn clockwise. There's our belt. And uh, from here, the three mounting bolts for our tensioner assembly. We got one here, one here, and another one kind of tucked up underneath this hose, which I could pull out of the way so you could see it. So only three mounting bolts, pretty simple to get to. Uh, so next up, we're gonna remove the three E10 mounting bolts for the tensioner. These are pretty tiny, so they shouldn't really be torqued that much. Should come out pretty easy. You can see it's already pretty loose. So I'm just gonna remove this lower mounting bolt. And uh, once it's getting close to the end, I'm just gonna hold on to the tensioner so it doesn't go flying or falling down. But uh, there we go, that's the tensioner. And uh, even though you can see that the uh, there's no noise, well, there's a little bit of noise in the bearing. You can see all the grooves that are worn through it. So if you had to replace the belt um, and you put a new belt on, uh, the, the belt and the pulley wear together. So, um, if you were to reinstall the belt, let's just say you had to remove it to do a different job or a different service, you want to make sure that it's reinstalled in the same direction it travels. You'd want to mark it first because uh, you want to make sure that the grooves that are on the surface of the pulley line up with the grooves that are also on the belt. Uh, but on the other hand, if you were just replacing this and leaving the belt on or replacing the belt and leaving this in, you run into the risk of a bunch of noise happening and premature wear. So these things wear together. They should be replaced at the same time. Um, like this wear is not uncommon and that's not necessarily a problem, but um, you really just need to replace both at the same time. When you buy the tensioner kit from fcpro.com, it's going to come with an INA branded tensioner. It's going to come in an INA box. However, you'll notice it does say gates on it. That is intentional. Uh, INA does not make the tensioner for BMW, but they do source the OE tensioner uh, and just repackage it. So it is still the correct OE tensioner, despite the fact that it says gates on it. And you can see here, this is the original tensioner. Probably been installed on the car since new, and you can also see that it says gates as well. So um, we often get that question when it comes to belt tensioners. Sometimes, you know, INA is generally the manufacturer, but sometimes you'll see gates. Uh, there's a couple of other brands here and there that you'll sometimes see. So uh, if it's coming in the INA box, it is the OE tensioner, even if INA doesn't make it. So uh, they rebox and resell under their name, and that's just kind of the way that it is. But just wanted to let you know in advance, if you happen to notice this difference, Totally normal, that's the way it's supposed to be. And this is the OE, OE tensioner, as you can tell. So no problems on that. Our brand new tensioner uh, comes with a pin that locks the tensioner uh, in place, which is fantastic because um, without this pin in place, it would be very difficult to reinstall. Uh, so little quick tip, whenever you're removing one of these tensioners from the vehicle, uh, when you pull the pin, make sure you keep the pin because later on it'll be very easy to lock the tensioner in place and pull the uh, belt off. So always hold on these pins. They always have a use later on down the road. And then in terms of installation, um, there's the three mounting points on the engine block. Uh, but it might be deceiving because you might think that all of this nice stuff on the front, the numbers, the gates, that would point forward. It doesn't point forward. This uh, mechanism right here, this is where the spring is since this is a mechanical tensioner that actually has to point towards the engine block. Uh, so make sure it gets reinstalled in the same orientation it was removed. And you also notice that if you tried to do it uh, the other way, uh, this lower pulley would not be lined up properly. So you can only go back in one way. Technically you can bolt it in two different ways, uh, but you can only bolt it in one way correctly. So just uh, remember how it went back in and you'll be good. So once again, the three mounting bolts are E10. All right, torque spec on these three mounting bolts is 19 newton meters. They are not torqued to yield or anything like that, so just one nice, easy torque spec. Very simple. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our new belt. There's no orientation that this needs to be installed. However, uh, when I put these on, I always make it so that the uh, lettering is facing towards the front. That way, if you ever needed to see the size of the belt in the future, you don't have to read it upside down or do some kind of awkward angle over the top of the engine. So installation, this is fairly simple. Uh, what we're gonna do is 
It comes around the bottom of the crank pulley, up around the AC compressor, up around the top of the alternator, and then comes down under here. Um, so it is a little bit of a tight squeeze uh, between the crank pulley and our tensioner. So I might actually have to release tension on it and put the pin back in, but I think I might be able to get it on there. So just sneak it in, pull, come up around the top of our alternator and make sure that it's all around the bottom of the crank pulley. So kind of just push into place. It is gonna be a relatively tight fit going on, but there should still be some slack. The key here is making sure that uh, the belt is properly sitting. At this point, we have the belt routed on all of the three main grooved pulleys here. Like I said, it is a little bit tight on the crank pulley, so you have to kind of push it into place. Uh, but once you push it into place, it will basically um, slide into the grooves and it'll sort of uh, seat itself. So everything is lined up at this point. All we gotta do is uh, take our 16 mil, relieve a little bit of tension on that tensioner, pull the pin out, and we're done. So the only trick on these, in terms of getting this pin out, is the engine moves quite a bit on those engine mounts, so you have to rotate clockwise to get enough slack to pull the pin out. And then once the pin is out, you can release it, and it automatically tensions the belt for you. Yeah, so at this point, uh, everything's installed. Uh, and all we really need to do at this point is just reinstall that um, that air silencer that goes below the air box uh, that we removed. Like I said, you don't necessarily have to remove it to do this job. We just did it for the filming. Uh, reinstall the air box, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll go ahead and show you those steps next and wrap it up. So we're going to go ahead and slide this silencer here onto the bottom. Uh, there's some alignment tabs that you have to kind of be aware of when you're putting this in place. And once those are lined up, push it together, and we'll go ahead and tighten our hose clamp. But before we do that, we want to also want to make sure that our little, um, got this little thing for our hose down here. We're going to go ahead and push that back on. We're going to go ahead and drop our air box back on to the inlet hose for the uh, turbo. And there's also this uh, area over here, which is for fresh air, picks up somewhere in front of here in the bumper. Notice how it has these two notches on it. Well, it just slides right down into place, which makes it super convenient. So you just slide it down onto the uh, air, air duct over here, and then we'll just go ahead and push it into place. Take our fresh air hose here, slide that up. Go ahead and tighten the hose clamp next, which is a six mil. I'm going to take our hood release cable, put it back into the holders here on top of the air box like so. And then we'll go ahead and reconnect our mass airflow sensor. It just clicks into place. So as you can see, replacing the serpentine belt on an N20 or N26 powered car, especially on this F30, super simple, lots of room to work with. Really only three bolts that you need to remove and a couple hose clamps. Uh, other than that, uh, I'd say getting the belt back onto lower crank pulley is a little bit of a tight fit. And if you can go ahead and lock that tensioner in advance when you're initially removing the belt, it'll make your jo uh, job a little bit easier, but not required because you can still hold the tensioner off with your ratchet and your socket. But super easy job, something you could definitely do at home, not that many tools required. Uh, you can save yourself a little bit of money by not having somebody else do it for you. So anyway, I hope you learned something in this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment box below. Hit that like button if you like this video. Also hit subscribe, we have a lot more videos on the way. And as always, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.